Good evening, everybody. The music fan is back bringing smiles to the faces, knowledge to the people, and most importantly, music to the masses. Now, I am back with one more bonus video under the Linkin Park heading for my Digging Through Discography. And this time I'm talking about one of the lesser known side projects by the Linkin Park members. This one being Dead by Sunrise and their only album, Out of Ashes. Now, you know at least one of the people in this band, and it's Chester Bennington. He was the lead singer of this band from Los Angeles, California, also known as Snow White Tan earlier on. They are an alt rock slash hard rock slash electronic rock slash post grunge band. And other than Chester Bennington on lead vocals and a little bit of guitar and synthesizer. So other than Chester Bennington, which you have on lead vocals, guitar, and synthesizer, you have Amir Durak on lead guitar, rhythm guitar, synthesizer, programming, and bass guitar, Ryan Shuck on guitar, synthesizer, and beatbox vocals on the last track, Anthony Fu Valsic on programming and synthesizer, Brandon Belsky on bass guitar, additional synthesizer, and additional programming, and Elias Andra on drums. The creation of this band, at least in terms of an idea, started with Shuck meeting Bennington during the Hybrid Theory recording, but they didn't start working until 2005 together with the other members of this other band called Julian K. At first they started with the name Snow White Tan, and they started recording some ideas for Out of Ashes, which was supposed to be released in 2006 but it was pushed back until 2007 at first, but due to Bennington's commitments with Lincoln Park, they had to push it off indefinitely until after Minutes to Midnight. So that one dropped, and then after the Minutes to Midnight tour, Bennington started working with Shock and the rest of the band again, and did some shows as well as started recording in July of 2008 with Howard Benson, as the executive producer and Bennington doing a lot of producing as well. Bennington would write out most of the songs on the acoustic guitar and then afterwards the rest of the band would come in together to work on an actual arrangement, a more fleshed out arrangement. Bennington has a major imprint on this album in terms of not just instrumentation but also the programming and the production side of it. This album itself dropped on October 13th, 2009 and had three singles. Crawl Back In on August 18th, 2009. Let Down on November 24th, 2009. And Fire on June 30th, 2010. Apparently only in Japan though. This particular album is definitely a much more of a rock album and has some more darker tones that Bennington couldn't really use on Linkin Park. So that's where the more stylistic ideas come in. So after listening to it, actually for the first and second time, because I've never listened to this album before, I didn't really know about them that much, but I decided to take a look into this album and see how it was. So after all the time with it, what do I think about the album? I think it's a very decent rock alt rock album first thing that you definitely hear is the there isn't as much metal timbre to it you're not getting the new metal sound or even the pop rock sound that you get from it's the midnight you get more of a alt rock sound kind of like velvet revolver at times or sometimes three days grace sometimes more punk and sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. For me, I think there's some pretty interesting arrangements, Fire being one of them. The opening track is a nice starting track with some nice little chord touches and some good harmonies on there. Too Late is another one of these that is a little bit more sedated and more interesting in terms of an arrangement. It doesn't sound necessarily like it fits into one of these molds or sounds too derivative. There's a nice little chord progression of A minor, C, and D and then A minor F G and what I like about it is that it kind of uses this idea of the C chord on the guitar and then moving up to a D chord on that same shape so what you get is C E G and then D F sharp G so it's a, it's a nice little touch that I hear on a couple of different songs I, I I like the idea of it let down feels a little bit derivative at times 
terms of like an alt rock song, but I like the synthesizer parts on there. And the, the, the ideas in the verses make up for some of the lackluster ideas in the chorus. Into You, I would say, is another one that sounds more like their type of band, as in something original rather than derivative. Again, keep using that word and you'll find out a little bit later why. The main riff, it has this idea of being six measures long, which is a pretty nice idea on an album that is pretty standard in general. I like some of the ideas right before the last chorus where you get this kind of almost round at times where, where Bennington overlays some uh, vocals on there. I would say those are the ones that kind of stand out as all their own. Uh, you get some punk rock emphasis on Inside of Me, which I like. It's a fast paced song, but I think it's too cluttered with ideas and not enough time to resolve enough of it. My Suffering is another one that's frantic and feels a, a little bit better and has a nice interesting guitar solo. Even has screaming on it as well as the song Condemn has screaming on it. So Bennington isn't just doing his, um, just singing. He also throws some screaming in there at times. Uh, you also get some more Three Days Grace kind of style with uh, Walking in Circles and In the Darkness. I would say between the two, In the Darkness is a little bit more interesting because it switches between some acoustic instrumentation and some electric instrumentation. I would say it gets a little bit weird at the end because it's the only time where it really throws in electronics and it's literally at the end, like with the last 30 seconds. It sounds kind of weird, but it's a it's a really deep song in terms of instrumentation and I really like it. It's one of the better ones. Uh, I like the, the rhythmic ideas on the acoustic guitar at the beginning and transitioning into that distorted guitar. And then, like I said, you also have this more alt rock, more velvet revolver sound on some of these songs. The ones that stand out or crawl back in definitely feels like you could have had that on a velvet revolver album. Condemned feels like the most cliched out of all of these and End of the World is also one of these that feels really cliched at times. I would say Condemned more so. It feels like anything that comes off a Velvet Revolver, Stone Temple, late Stone Temple Pilots, that kind of sound that you heard a lot in in the, er, the late 2000s. End of the World is a little bit more insufferable because of the just very cliched revolutionary lyrics talking about how everything's going to shit and we gotta do something about it but it's it's done in so so much a cliched way that it gets a little bit annoying the only thing that kind of saves it it has an interesting bridge but it kind of honestly goes on a little bit too long for my likings the only one i haven't really talked about is give me your name and this is a good tie into talking about what Bennington does vocally. It's kind of beautiful at points. It's a very cheesy song, but this is the first time where I can remember hearing Bennington using falsetto on a song, and it's beautiful. He has a really strong falsetto that he never really uses. You heard a little bit on the transition to the second verse of Let Down. It's very nice to hear this difference that you never really hear from him. He also does very well on the alt rock. I can see why when they got rid of Scott Whelan for Star and Temple Pilots that they used him on the EP before they got a new singer. I would say that his voice still doesn't match the timbre of Scott Whelan. But he does a very good job with the sound that he creates here. I also think that there's a lot of times where these arrangements are a little bit better because of the harmonies on here. There's a lot of really interesting harmonies ideas, especially on a song, a song like Crawl Back In. What makes it so much more interesting and stands out a little bit is because of the harmonies on the the verse and the chorus and just the power at the end of that song where he goes you want to crawl back in and he does it a, a, an octave higher it's something that you wouldn't really hear from a lot of the singers in the alt rock at that time too late has some beautiful harmonies let down has some of the best harmonies on the album inside of me even though i don't really like the song it has some good harmonies into you walking in circles, in the darkness, all these songs 
could have been a little bit more predictable, but making up for it is the melody lines and the harmony lines that Bennington creates on all these songs. So it makes it a little bit of notch above the more cliched ideas. The lyrics, mostly talking about dealing with pain, dealing with suffering, dealing with depression. There's a couple of songs talking about love and, and lust and everything like that. Not necessarily any different from a lot of the stuff from Linkin Park. I would only say maybe it's a little bit more jarring, a little bit more in your face on some of these ideas. But again, it's, it's mostly the same ideas that they have talked about and maybe have talked about better on different albums, even One More Light. They may, I would say they, they talked about these ideas a little bit better. So all in all, a decent alt-rock album doesn't really do anything different from that sound. I would say if you are a Linkin Park fan and like the rock side of it, listen to it once. You'll hear some interesting harmonies, you'll hear some good melody lines. I think it's at least enough to listen to once. Out of all these albums that I could put in the Linkin Park name, this is probably the most rudimentary one. But there's some good stuff on here. And definitely listen to the, the singles. Listen to Let Down, Too Late, Crawl Back In. I would say the, the beginning half is stronger than the, the back half. In the Darkness is a great closer. Into You is a good song as well. From there, I would say everything else, at least it's it's it's... Space out enough where you can have one bad song every now and again. So, not a bad CD, and it actually did pretty well. The album peaked at number 29 on the Billboard 200. It only did sell 50,000 copies, but not a, not a horrible CD. A, a nice little touch and a nice little ender to this Digging Through Discography of Linkin Park. I hope you've learned a little bit more about this band and all the other side projects that they had. Um, I don't really have much else that I can say about this band. So if you enjoyed this whole entire ride, I, I, I thank you for watching all of this. And if you haven't, if you missed a couple of these, take a look. I, I'll put the playlist in the end of the video so that you can go through this whole entire thing. And of course, if you like the CD, like the video, share this with your friends, subscribe to my channel, comment on other albums that I could review or just your, your memories of this album, if you will. And just keep on watching my videos. So on Sunday, I will be back with another Are You In, and then another Are You In on Wednesday. And then I am starting a brand new chapter of the Digging Through Discography. This one, a little bit of a lesser known band, but hopefully you will enjoy it nonetheless. When I start my Digging Through Discography of the band Hawken. But until then, I will see you in the next video. Peace.